Hi there, welcome to this guide on PTR patch 6.2 build 19890. I'm King Martin, people know me on Warcraft as Arch, and I will be going through basically all the Warlock changes, um, everything we can expect, everything that happens as and when it does. I put a new video out every time there's a substantial change in a new build. Um, so we're seeing quite a bit of a change, both from buffs and nerfs, from different powers and set bonuses, and just generally from the, uh, the the gear that drops. So what we'll do is we'll start off looking at the generic buffs and nerfs that are coming in the next patch as they currently stand. As we all know, this could always change, so don't take this too much to heart if you feel disheartened or happy or elated or anything like that, because things could possibly change but I think the first iteration always gives us a good idea as to what direction Blizzard generally want to go. Now we can see here that with Warlock uh, general corruption now deals 12% more damage so that's good for demonology, it's good for affliction, completely has no effect for destruction. Shadow Bolt now deals 25% less damage. Now as we know Shadow Bolt is a demonology only spell really uh, so that's quite a substantial nerf, 25% to Shadow Bolt. Affliction, Agony now deals 12% more damage, and Unstable Affliction now deals 12% more damage. So they've effectively buffed all the dots because they want to buff Affliction. That's why Corruption's had a 12% damage buff, which obviously by proxy buffs Demonology's damage, but I think because they've wanted, by the looks of it, to give Demonology an overall nerf, They've actually reduced everything. We've got Mastery reduced in effectiveness by 4%. Chaos Wave Doom, Hand of Gul'dan, Soulfire and Touch of Chaos all now deal 25% less damage as well as Shadow Bolt. So whilst yes, Corruption got a buff because they use it because they wanted to buff Affliction, Demonology as a whole has received a almost a 25% nerf which is quite substantial. Now this could change they might you know tweak these numbers a bit it might not be as much of a nerf come live but it's fair to say that it is quite obvious that blizzard do want to bring demonology down to be on par with the other specs i mean funnily enough the three specs once you get to best in slot are uh, fairly on par it's just purely the way that the fights are in Blackrock Foundry that puts demonology ahead there's a lot of movement there's a lot of targets if it's single target with very little movement then demonology is actually the worst spec affliction is the best and then destruction behind that is simmed out to be slightly ahead of demonology but because of the way the fights are demonology is triumphing so it's interesting that they've gone the the approach of flat out nerfing demonology by 25% considering it's not that their spells do too much damage it's just literally that because of the the way the fights have been tuned demonology shines so um, it's good news for affliction players people that want to play affliction it looks like next patch uh, that's going to be the way to go if, if the numbers stay the way they are now um, but you know time will tell but there's more to it just than buffs and nerfs. For instance, we have set bonuses. Now, you could huge, get a huge nerf, but if your set bonus is so ridiculously overpowered, then, of course, you're still going to do more damage. <clears throat> T. Right, so let's have a look at them. We have Affliction set bonus. Let's start with them. Two-piece. Damage done by your Drained Soul has a 30% chance to extend the duration of your Dark Soul Misery by 5 seconds. Which sounds nice. I think cool. That would be handy. Um, but when you actually look at it and, and break it down, that is definitely going to... I can guarantee you now that won't be how it is live. I, I, I bet you any money that 30% is going to change probably down to... Well, what it's going to change to will be very hard to guess because it's going to be very difficult for them to balance. But I imagine it's going to probably drop down between 10 and 20%. Because on 30%, it, it, it's never going to... You're going to have 100% Dark Soul uptime. Because if you just look at the theoretical numbers of it... Drained Soul is a four second cast, completely unbuffed, which ticks four times. So it ticks once every second. So within a five second period, you're going to get five ticks, which means theoretically speaking, you're going to get one proc every five seconds. Every 10 seconds, you're gonna get three procs. So every 10 seconds, you're gonna be gaining 15 seconds of Dark Soul duration. It's giving you a five second buff. It's gonna stack higher and higher and higher. You're never gonna run out of Dark Soul. 
And when you think, yes, you're going to have to recast your dots and stuff like that, and yes, fair enough, but you're only going to take your two GCDs out. So, you know, every 15 seconds, you're going to lose two seconds out of the five second bonus you've got. You're still going to have three seconds extra every time. So it's just going to constantly stack up and up and up, and you're not going to run out of time. And when you factor in the fact that the four piece is while Dark Soul Misery is active, your Drain Soul damage also refreshes the duration of your Haunt effect on the target. You're going to open with Drain Soul and Haunt, and um, sorry, Dark Soul and Haunt in your dots. And you're going to have Dark Soul and Haunt up for the entire fight. Because that's just, with that higher proc chance, especially when you consider with Dark Soul, that's 20% haste, plus haste from gears, maybe 10, 15, 20% haste, depending on how good your gear is. You're looking at possibly 8 ticks every 5 seconds. That's 2 procs every 5 seconds. That's 10 seconds added duration every 5 seconds. It's... That, that's going to be very difficult for them to tune so I wouldn't be surprised if they completely rework that set bonus because it's going to be very hard for them to tune it but we're going to have to keep an eye on that and see what happens uh, Demonology, your soul fire increases the damage done by your demons by 5000% until cancelled that is obviously placeholder and definitely going to change <clears throat> I'm kind of inclined to say this is probably more likely to be 50% rather than 5,000% um, just because they're the sort of numbers they work with this isn't Diablo, we don't work in hundreds of percentiles and thousands of percentiles it's wow, so 50% probably more damage done by your demons and I highly, highly doubt it's going to be until cancelled, it will be something like 10 or 15 seconds or something like that although if it's your soul fire increases, that's probably going to be something a lot shorter than that because you, you're soul firing a lot so it's going to be see, interesting to see how they work that one. Uh, four set, when Molten Core occurs, you have a 30% chance to summon a demon from the void to assist you in battle. So, oh, actually, you know what? I've only just hit me. Possibly this, the demons they refer to in the, nah, they wouldn't do that because I was about to say maybe the demons they refer to in the two set is only the demons summoned from the source set, but it would be the other way around if they're going to do that because you can't, give you a two set which increases the damage done of an item of something which doesn't summon until you got your four set so it's clearly going to be all of them so looking at this separately on its own um this is quite the power of this four set cannot be determined until we know the power of this demon once we know how much damage this demon does then we can know how powerful this four set is until that you, it could be anything it could be you know that demon could be summoned and hit like a wet noodle or it could be summoned and hit like a fucking truck until we know how much damage it does, we have no idea how good this set bonus is. So again, it's another one we're going to have to just come back and look at. Our destruction, two set, reduces the cast time of your Chaos Bolt by three seconds. Now that's pretty nice because, let's have a look, I'm pretty sure that basically makes the um, Chaos Bolt instant. Let's have a look, Chaos Bolt, Chaos Bolt, C, Chaos Bolt. Yeah, 2.73 second cast. So reduces the cast time by three seconds well well it's what's interesting set interesting is it says three seconds but if you actually look at the spell effect uh, wrong one there we go if you look at the spell effect it actually says reduce casting time by two and a half seconds so that would make it not quite instant not with the the haste that I currently have anyway um, so I don't know whether they intend for this to be an instant cast chaos bolt or just a stupidly fast cast chaos ball but you know anything less than your global cooldown is kind of pointless there would you know there's no point making the cast anything less than your global cooldown because you're still going to be standing around waiting for your global cooldown to come back off cooldown so it, I'm not sure what they're actually planning on doing with that but then the four set so how it's weird because you've got two spell mechanics here but it's just the way they've they've done it because because it's not because it's your chaos bolt has a chance to not consume an ember rather than you have a chance to gain a buff which causes your chaos bolt to not consume an ember they've basically done it retroactive so you have to cast the chaos bolt and then in order to for it to not gain an ember they basically give you the ember back so that's what this extra spell effect here but a one percent chance to not consume an ember i'm sorry but that one percent really really needs to change it's quite funny how they've gone Completely overpowered percentage here, completely overpowered percentage here, and then amazingly underwhelmingly underpowered percentage here. 
like one percent chance to not consume an ember. You know, you might fire off forty chaos bolts in a fight. That's not even one. That's point four chaos bolts are going to be free. So this needs to be somewhere in the region of fifteen to twenty-five percent because otherwise it's just going to be absolute shit. Um, so all three of these really need to be kept an eye on, and until we actually get access to the items to be able to test them, it's going to be hard to know. But uh, it's interesting to see what direction they're going in, and um, we're going to have to keep coming back to these as and when they release new builds. So uh, what we'll do now is we'll switch over to the actual PTR itself, because it's all well and good looking at what buffs and nerfs individual specs have received. It's all well and good looking at the set bonuses for the set for individual specs. However, there is a th another factor to the to the next patch, which is going to determine which spec is best, and that's the itemization of the raid. If the raid gear, you know, itself is just very heavily crit based, then it's not going to do much for affliction. If it's very heavily haste based, then affliction is going to do very well, and destruction is not. So we could look at that. But right now we can't because as you'll see, every single piece of item has got nothing but versatility on it. So we can't look at that yet until they implement that. But one thing we can look at is the trinkets that drop because they have been itemised. And as it stands, there's five trinkets from 13 bosses for us. Uh, one is dog shit. Uh, one is very situational. And the other three are sort of spec dependent, really. Um, so, first of all, this is kind of the crap one. It's got intellect, crit, and haste. Now, it might be good for another caster, but for warlocks, uh, no spec really wants it because affliction likes the haste, doesn't like the crit. You know, destruction likes the crit, doesn't like the haste. Demonology, it likes both stats, but. You only go for one of the two stats. You go mastery and haste, or mastery and crit. You don't go mastery, haste, and crit. So um, it's not it's not that great. Uh, another trinket we have is flat mastery with a, a high intellect proc, uh, twenty second duration, one proc per minute. So effectively, that's uh, up for one third of the time, which is quite good. It's got a thirty three percent uptime. So that's that. That's a potentially go to default trinket just because it's, it's you know there's no thinking about it it's just straight mastery and intellect that is good for all three specs probably best for demonology and destruction and then not as good for um affliction if it was haste then it would be very good but it's mastery instead uh another trinket we have do we where is it here we go this is the very situational one 502 intellect Damage spells have a chance to fire a beam black like the target's direction, dealing 14,000 tower damage to all targets that pass it through 5.5 blocks per minute. So, this is going to be very good for a fight like Beast Lord, or for your daily heroic dungeon, because, you know, you're just going to smash the shit out of any packs you come across. So, this is the situation on one I was talking about. It could be very good, or it could just be crap. It completely depends how much that damage holds up on a single target fight compared to the other trinkets. I imagine it's probably only going to be good for... Um, for your daily heroic dungeons or for lots of target boss fights especially when you consider there is another trinket well, there's another two trinkets which are very good which you probably want to take instead so we've then got this one which I personally think is probably the best trinket for affliction um, well, it's quite good for all three of the specs, really. 502 intellect. Your damage spell is direct spell damage has a chance to apply mark of doom for 10 seconds onto your target. Direct spell damage you do against the marked target triggers an explosion for 9,000 shadow damage. So you're gonna get one and a half procs a minute of this 10 second debuff on your target, and then every time you hit them, they're gonna explode for 9,000 damage. So things like affliction, which has got a very high APS of attacks per second. It's going to be really, really good because you're going to be procking at boom, 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 boom constantly. Um, it can, I think for demonology, it depends whether your pets can proc it, whether their attacks considered a direct attack or not, uh, whether it procs from that. Uh, demon destruction should be quite good because I mean, especially with instant chaos bolts, you should be firing off quite a few spells pretty quickly. So it could be. It's a very, very strong trinket. Um, we're going to have to see how how that sims out for the, in terms of the damage it does. We're not sure whether that damage is luck lackluster or whether it's quite good. Depends on which scales of spell power. So 
testing needs to be done, but on paper it looks like a very strong trinket. And now what they've done for Archimonde is the boss drops a trinket. And this trinket is kind of like how the set pieces work. The effect it has completely depends on what spec the person's wearing it. Now, I don't know whether there's going to be like a mage trinket, a warlock trinket, you know, this, that, the other, or whether it's a case of the trinket that drops uh, is good for everybody, and then whenever whoever equips it, they get the, the benefit of it. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be a, a one trinket per class. But then, what it effectively is, in my mind, is this is a third set bonus. Because if you look at it, so this is what it does for demonology uh, equip. Hand of Gul'dan has a 40% chance to also summon three wild imps. That is just an extra set bonus. It's got no flat stats. It's, it's not a proc. It's it's just a, a buff. It's just a, you know, it's a bonus. Which is interesting. It's a very interesting direction for them to go with the trinket. But it's different for every spec. For instance, Destruction, it is... Um, incinerates against the target, uh, increase your crit chance against that target by 4%, stacking up to 5 times. So you've effectively, after a bit of ramp up, you're going to have another 20% crit chance against your current target. So that's also quite good. You know, the demonology one's pretty good. The destruction one's pretty good. The, the affliction one isn't great. Um, let me show you it. It's mainly because it's hard to understand what direction they're going with it at the minute because they've worded it a bit shit. Um, what the Affliction one does is reduces the duration and period of agony, unstable affliction and corruption by 20%. Now, what's weird is they've said duration and period. No, well, that's they're the same thing. The duration and the period are the same thing. So, um, I don't know whether they're wanting you to be casting a agony, unstable affliction and corruption more often to take you away from casting drained soul for so much in between Bells, considering you won't be recasting Haunt at all, because you're going to have 100% uptime of Dark Soul, and meaning 100% uptime of Haunt. Um, but I'm not sure how good that will be. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. We're going to have to wait until we can actually get a hold of that, or wait until they change the wording on it to make it a bit more under easy to understand. Um, but there, that's basically all the trinkets. So the trinkets are looking good, look, look, a lot more interesting than the last tier's trinkets. Um, so there's there's strong trinkets for all three specs really it's not a case of they're they're good for one spec and they're all crap for another spec they're all good for all three specs You've got plenty of choice to work with there so that's quite good so the, the next tier is looking to be it's basically i think i think it's going to boil down to how much movement there is in a fight and how many targets there are per fight so until we can actually get into the uh, the raids to properly test out the different specs, it's going to be hard to know. But I, I'm I'm inclined to say that Affliction's going to reign supreme this tier, just because they've buffed it so much, just because of how well it's simming compared to Demonology, and especially now that they've given Demonology a flat 25% nerf. I am tempted to say that it's it's going to be the best, but. Destruction is doing quite well, hasn't received any buffs, didn't receive any nerf, so I think that's going to be the middle ground again. Um, so we're going to have to wait and see. And for one last Brucey bonus, they have, they are redoing all of the models, all the uh, pet models. They're, they haven't released any except for the uh, Doom Guard at the minute. So what I'll do is I will show you the new improved Doom Guard because he does look badass as a finishing note for this guide to the PTR and there you go he's got a nice badass set of new armors and big ass horns and it looks to me like his head's been smacked with a shovel and pressed into his shoulders but you know he still looks pretty fucking cool so he is looking good and uh, on that note I will say ciao for now I'll see you in the next substantial build where I'll do an update video and uh, comment, like, and subscribe if you like this. And I will um, see you guys in the next video.